Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Real Short Box. I'm Donald. I'm Jared. And my name is Kevin. Dr. Green, to be precise. Yes, yes. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about marketing tie-ins. And what we mean by that is uh, any type of uh, marketing ploy or idea that uh, comic book companies had in mind when uh, they made deals with companies such as Hostess mm -hmm. or McDonald's, Pizza Hut, things like that. Um, even like shaving companies. Mm -hmm. It gets crazy, guys. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, marketing tie-ins. Kevin, hit us. Hit you up. Well, first I'll start with Hostess ads and comics. Now, I loved Hostess as a kid. We used to have a thrift store there mm -hmm. in, in my hometown, and you could get... You could get six of those double packs of cupcakes. The cream filled, like chocolate, or the for, orange. For or a the, dollar. Yeah. Six of the double packs for they're, a they're dollar. They're still, like, when you have a sugar craving, mm -hmm. they're still cheap and readily available. I, I, I would go nuts because I would see the kids who, like, I, my parents tried to raise me all healthy and stuff. And oh, that's terrible. Totally backfired because as soon as I like, had my allowance and I'd, like, leave home, I'd be like, I'm just going to buy a bunch of sugar shit. Yeah. And I did. And I got the sugar shit. Did they beat you for <laughs> trying to defy the vegan ways of Northern no, California? No, I straight told them, like, 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 the next year, I was like, hey, you know those, like, really expensive, like, healthy lunches? I would just go to school and throw them away and then just beg wow. for Cheetos and shit. They're like, oh, that's great. They should have disowned you for that kind of disrespect. To be fair, they went overboard. They'd be like, we're going to give you, this is like when health food stores were brand new, and they put the peanuts, like, in the machine and grinded it out. And oh, it was just like, oh, yeah. Like, no taste, thick, ch oh, fucking hated that shit yeah i was like and then i had a bite of skippy and i was like well fuck everything else right so but those hostess i remember kids getting those and being like damn those look good and to this day i'll still grab one if i if i have like a crazy sugar rush and then call your parents and be like, like fuck you was like, i'll just no now i just send them a, like a picture and be like look at me eating this thing <laughs> oh look at the cherry juice all over my face i'm sorry was it like some kind of artificial like shortage of years back Artificial shortage? No, I know what you're thinking about. You think about the Twinkies. The Twinkies, the Twinkies. yeah. They yeah, were going to yeah. stop making Twinkies. And that's what they, people they, went on eBay and they were no, checking No, they up. did. Oh, like, they did. Hostess went under. Oh, they the did. Company, the whole Hostess? Yeah, the oh, whole wow. company went under because of that whole health food craze that came back and, you know, McDonald's was getting slammed and everything. They couldn't do Super Size anymore. No, Hostess yeah. took a hit. They took right. a hard hit and they th that was it. They went under. Right. And then for, I don't, I, I think it was close to a year, if not maybe two. I don't know. It wasn't too long. Right. But there were underground sales of like Twinkies and cupcakes and I remember and people stuff. like hoarding them. Yeah. Yeah. Because, and, and for me, it was always, and I, this is a terrible name for a product, Snowballs. <laughs> Especially after you see Clark's. And right. You know, yeah. And, and a lot of you people know why, but um, I loved the cake, the snowball cake. So which... what you're saying is you just liked a big fat snowball in your mouth. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> apparently. Yes, I did. <laughs> All of its creamy goodness. Uh, that chocolate cake with cream in the middle covered in coconut, and they would color it for, like, the holidays. Uh -huh. um, you know, St. Patrick's Day was always green. Valentine's Day, it was pink. Um, and then I think they did, like, orange or red at some point as well. What were the other ones, too? Zingers or dingers? Zingers. Yeah, zingers. Yeah, zingers. That was Dolly Madison Okay. that actually did that. And I believe at one point then Hostess bought Dolly Madison. Okay. And they started making those as well. So those are back, too. And then that became Ashley Madison, that uh, dating site for people to have affairs on. Right. Now, sir, yes. I certainly hope for your sake <laughs> that you're avoiding that site. No, Raspberry no, no. My name was cream not. was yeah. your name on there, I believe. <laughs> Raspberry cream. <laughs> Raspberry cream zinger. Oh my god! But no, those pies still out. So eat the fuck out of those things. All oh, the hostess them. pies. Yeah. I remember um, my favorite when I was a kid was the uh, the cherry one. The cherry Absolute. pie is still the shit. There's a choc the chocolate one with like that fake chocolate pudding inside. Do or you remember? I don't. I don't necessarily know if it was hostess, but they certainly took it from hostess if it wasn't. Uh -huh. But when the Ninja Turtles was huge, they had the ooze pies. <laughs> And it was like a green That ooze. does not sound right. It was a green pudding. Right. And vanilla pudding that was dyed green, green inside of a pie crust. And it was delicious. That's like, I mean, obviously not the same flavor, but when they remember when they did the green ketchup for a long time? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Never got me. I never could. Yeah. And then yeah. they had the purple what ketchup. What and disgusting. then they did the rainbow breads and yeah. things like that. It was weird. Yeah. Too it was weird. just a little kid thing that didn't catch on, to be honest. But it was Marvel, right? Yeah, it was Marvel Comics. It started like with Spider-Man like in the late 70s through the early 80s. Now, I, if, I would just, I, I, I implore you all, just Google 
uh, Hostess Cupcakes or Hostess Marvel Comics ads mm-hmm. and go to images and there's hundreds of them and they're all great. And I've been reading, like I've been telling you guys, I've been reading a lot of like old older comics lately. I've been reading a run of Spider Woman and those are all from late 70s to, to early 80s. Good read, by the way. Great read and hilarious ads. And some will be talking about, but definitely there's a whole ton of Hostess ones in there. And I'm sure we could all do a, do a run of... Uh... You got some from Hostess too, right? Didn't you like... What's that? Do you have like something from Hostess to add on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's uh, um, there was one I actually posted this on our on our Super Palookas group. It's the title is they would always have like a title like a big Spider Man in the big save or something like that, and always Hostess cakes, Hostess pies save the day. Mm-hmm. And this one was the Hulk versus the Fumi Goonies. Fumi P H O O M I E. Don't know what the goddamn hell a Fumi is. Uh, Goonies, and this predates Goonies the movie. What? Uh, yeah. So the Fumi Goonies, which uh, are actually not really villains, they're just this is so. So I'll just give you the layout, and I can explain these because each of these things was like six panels. So you got Bruce Banner sitting there by the post office, and he's like, "A mailman? What a great outdoors job to apply for! No enemies except a yapping dog or two. And he walks into the mail. Uh, the mail post office, and he's like, but mailmen are civil servants. There will be questions, forms, <laughs> tests. This is for a fucking pie ad. <laughs> then it cuts to these, uh, they look like almost like like uh, like South American like army gorillas, and they just bust in and they say, we are the Fumi Goonies. You're all now hostages of the revolutionary government. Where the hell is he going? In the United States, what post office is he in? And then they're the revolutionary government? So yeah. then he says, then Bruce Banner, he has a thought bubble, and he goes, what lousy timing. Oh, no. Oh, no. I feel it happen. And he's not going to jizz in his pants. He's going to become <laughs> he's going to become the Hulk. And this is where it gets great. He turns into the Hulk, grabs all three of them in a bear hug. He's going to murder these guys. When a little kid comes up, and he's like, no, Hulk. Don't kill him, pretty much. Give him our hostess fruit pies, trademark. And then the guys, the Fumi Goonies, say, we surrender for fruit pies. <laughs> to them in prison later after the police have put the fumi goonies behind bars you have one guy going real fruit filling mmm delicious apple another one light flaky crust and then the third guy the cherry's better than any pie i've ever had he's right yeah it's good so is this ad basically advocating for children to commit crimes in order to get no to their products no i think it's more positive it's saying if you see a superhero about to commit a triple murder, uh-huh. just wave host his cupcakes and just try to get him any way to stop from killing them so we could get them in jail and then we could give them their cupcakes. You I know, see. I, have, their pies. I have something very similar. It is a it is a hostess one as well. Really? And mine's from DC though. That's okay. right. I did see a couple yeah. DC ones. Yeah. So I'm wondering how did that work? I, I well it's hostess. Those they reached out to whoever. Hostess The contract probably ran out. Hostess right. whores. Yeah. They were just take anything in their mouths with <laughs> So um mine was uh from 1977 and it was a ho- uh ad campaign from Hostess that featured um Wonder Woman and I believe it was Twinkies. Right. Uh this one was titled The Borrower, which is the name of the villain who takes things and then apparently uses Wonder Woman's bank card to take two hundred and fifty million dollars, she just had that in her bank. Because I guess she has that. I know yeah, bank cards of her bank. Back then. Yeah. He then goes and buys a twenty diamond, twenty diamond bracelet. Very specific. <laughs> a twenty diamond bracelet, apparently for himself, because he's wearing Was it. Was it Liberace? I don't know. It kind of looked like him though, and uses his signature to sign for it. Why? Wow. <laughs> Why? Wow. Well, yes. Well, he's fine. obviously the world's dumbest criminal. Right. So in order to stop him, because he's unstoppable, apparently, right. Wonder Woman leaves another purse, but she fills it with Twinkies. Oh, that'll get him. And she sets it outside of the fur shop that he's at inside <laughs> he's trying like, on furs. What are my, what is, what's, what, this is my lucky day. Another purse just 20 diamond there. bracelet <laughs> and furs this guy's getting. <laughs> Yeah, Somebody didn't quite Liberace. know what what that, you know a, a gentleman of this time would want. I or he guess. was a pimp, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> um, so she sets it and fills it with Twinkies outside the fur shop, where he's now buying fur for himself. So he stops everything when he sees the purse and starts talking about the time he stole Twinkies as a kid. <laughs> Actually, borrowing Twinkies as a kid and starts to open and eat one. When Wonder Woman's like, "Great, he's distracted now." 
because that's what the Twinkies yeah, were that's for, what for. S- in order to stop him because yeah. he was too fast otherwise. <laughs> so even though he had no speed skills, I didn't understand that either. So she lassos him and then brings an end to his horrible crime borrowing spree. crime spree. <laughs> so that was... A- that was a fun one to read, was the Wonder Woman one. And it's very timely since, you know, the movie yeah. came out and all. And she put the lasso truth on him, and she's like, why are you doing all this? And he's like, I have to talk to my parents about some secrets I'm keeping, and I want to just be honest with them. And I was <laughs> raped by a Twinkie when I was a kid, and then this molester gave me one. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Way too much information whoa. in this host's ads. Going to prison. Yeah. There you go. They'll just drop you off here. They'll take care of you. The host's ads are just, they're, they're the goddamn best. There's this one here, Captain America throwing a bunch of hostess on a chair. A bunch of cherry pie pies on his shield at people saying, I'll offer him hostess and Twinkies snack cakes. That should put him in a good mood. Yes. Basically, pies, cupcakes, and Twinkies will make anybody. It'll bring world peace. Yeah, it'll bring Uh, I would say, Kevin, what's your favorite uh, hostess product? Yeah. You know what? When I was a kid, I used to like that little, it was like a chocolate cupcake looking one. With the swirlies on the front? Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are the classic chocolate, yeah, yeah the chocolate cream cupcakes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can't go wrong with those. Those are great. Those um, I also like, they were called, when I was younger, I swear, and I could be wrong, but I swear they used to call them King Dongs. King, king Dongs? dongs? <laughs> Not Ding Dongs, but King Dongs. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then they changed the name to Ding Dongs. King Dongs. But I could be crazy. Maybe in the Midwest. This they might be another repressed memory or something. It could be. Yeah. It's called a King Dong. It's called a chocolate yeah, Ding Dong. Yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah, put it in your mouth, <laughs> kid. No. No. Yeah, so I really liked those when I was younger. Um, they also used to make Suzy Q's too. You guys remember those? Suzy Q's, Suzy remember, Q's, yeah. right? Which were like the they were like the chocolate cake on 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 top and bottom, and like just a cream, whipped cream center in the middle. You know where the greatest ones? Ho Hos. Ho Hos were pretty. Those awesome. were amazing. Those and were the, like the cake and the marshmallow. Or the I used filled. to get really pissed when my mom would buy the uh, the Swiss rolls from Little Debbie instead. Right. Because they taste completely different. Right. They look very similar. It's the same thing, but honey. Taste no, it's completely, not. no, it's yeah. not. For starters, if you packed your lunch in school, and that was a cool thing back in the day, if you packed your lunch in school and you brought out the individual Ho Hos, right. you were like the bee's knees. Right. And you always had to have two, though. Yeah. But if you brought out the Little Debbie Swiss rolls that already came two in a pack, mm-hmm. the Ho-Hos were wrapped individually. If you brought them and they were the Little little Debbie Swiss rolls, two in a pack, people just like, were like, oh, whatever. Right. But if you had the Ho-Hos, they were like, oh, man, let me get one of them. You know, hey, oh, I'll trade you. Well, it's like they have the generic versions of those Hostess Pies where, like, the Hostess Pies are big and they're filled with, like, all the, the gooey goodness. Yeah. Then there's the cheap ones you get usually, like, like a like a supermarket. It was, like, their brand. Uh-huh. And you take a bite and it's just hollow for, like, three bites. And then at the very bottom is, like, the stuff. Yeah. And you're just Total like, oh, bullshit. I just ate a sugar cookie or something. I don't yeah. know what the hell I ate. Yeah. Not cool. Oh, man. Not cool generic pie companies. Um, they must burn in hell for that. They should burn in hell for that. I got one uh, I found... Uh, Another, another through, going through the Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Woman comics that I, at the time it probably made a lot of sense. Is it pies? No, it wasn't pies. Hmm. It was cowboy boots, dingo cowboy boots, and guess who their big spokesman was? A baby? O.J. Simpson. <laughs> oh! oh. Orenthal J. Simpson? Orenthal J. Simpson. Mm. Well, because back then, O.J. Simpson was he's a salesman. All-American, well, he's also the all-American football player. He wasn't a murderer. He wasn't a murderer. <laughs> and he wasn't in Naked Gun yet, where she was great. Right. Well, that's yeah, the he was great thing. in Naked Gun. It's people who, this era, like like mid-70s, late 70s, he was O.J. the football player. He was the juice. The juice. Then for us, he was the Naked Gun guy who we knew was a football player, but he was basically the Naked Gun guy. And then... He also became the murderer for us. Yeah. And now for everybody, he's just the murderer. He's yeah, just for kids OJ growing up now, it's like, oh, that guy murdered somebody. So, Did he used to do something? Right, exactly. So now imagine reading, looking at these comic books, and you see these ads, and it's O.J. Simpson, a cartoon version of O.J. Simpson, talking to a bunch of kids, putting on his cowboy boots. Yeah, look at those boots. Yeah, they're great. They're like, hey, O.J., how about an autograph? He's like, sure, if you buy these dingo boots, kids. Because a lot of kids were wearing cowboy boots to school. Because mm-hmm. that's, that's normal. But it's just hilarious. It's smiling OJ. You could just see in those eyes the murder waiting. But yeah. Yeah, dingo walking. By the way, his uh, sports cards on eBay are not going for a high price. Yeah, I would imagine so. So if anybody's interested, should grab one up. <laughs> in- indeed. Yep. Anybody else got something here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do uh, real quick. Um, one of them was there was a, um, a alarm clock. 
Right. And this alarm clock's a little different than, than ordinary alarm clocks. It's, first of all, shaped in the shape of a dumbbell. I saw, okay, I saw this. Okay. The dumb, yeah, yeah. And it has a digital readout on the side of the dumbbell. But what makes it tie into everything is the fact that it's from the Thor movie, the first one. <laughs> I don't know how or why this took place. I think Marvel at one point was just allowing anybody to license the names of their characters to put it on things. That's to me, it's just those people that are just like, almost like the guys who sit in writer's rooms and are like, okay, I got another idea. Here's a guy. I don't know. They're just like trying to sell ideas. Mm -hmm. And it was just some dude like, Thor. Mm -hmm. Thor likes to lift weights. He's strong. That guy's got to lift weights. Yeah. Well, he's a god actually. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. Shut yeah. the fuck up. See? Yeah. See? Yeah, exactly. yeah. They're all uh, Edward G. Robinson. <laughs> but they're like... Uh, yeah, 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 and it's, it's a dumbbell, and uh, it goes on alarm. Thor, and someone's like, yeah, sure, whatever. Can you make it happen for $5? Sure, whatever, we'll sell it for 20 Like, mm -hmm. that's how I just see those things going on. One of the ones I found that was pretty awesome was, uh, it's actually, uh, it was like a two-for-one. Like, so in Europe, uh, when the Dark Knight, uh, when the Dark Knight came out, the Batman film, uh -huh. they had the, uh, uh, what was it, the, the Dark Whopper. At Burger King. <laughs> it was Dark made... Yes, I saw that. It was made with pepper jack cheese, black pepper ketchup, and, and this is the quotes, a darkly delicious sauce, which everybody knows never trust a secret darkly delicious sauce. You don't know what that could be. And then this is the funny thing. They did the same sandwich in America for Spider-Man 3. And they called it a different name, obviously, but the same ingredients, same whatever. So just like somebody just like... Uh, remember that thing we did for the, yeah, just do it for that one again. Yeah, rebrand it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, uh, they also, I believe in Japan, they call it, they do have it all the time, or they used to, they called it, I think it was the Ninja Burger or something like that. Oh, or. It had a, the, a the black, black bun. bun. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then, uh, they just did one recently. I think it was some type of fire, fire hot one. Right. And I will tell you, it was the first time I'd had a Whopper in forever, and it was delicious. It was a spicy son of a bitch. It had I like had a hot pepper forever. jack cheese yeah. and jalapenos on there. I even peeled the jalapenos off and it was still spicy. The bun was baked with, I think it was hot sauce. They literally put hot sauce in the batter to bake the buns. It was here's just I, delicious. Here's what I respect about Burger King. I probably, out of any fast food restaurant, I probably eat there the least. I ate there a lot when I was a little kid. Yeah. But I probably eat there the least. But what I do respect about them is they don't give a fuck. We were yeah. talking about McDonald's, it's how true. when the supersize thing came out and they were like, okay, we're not going to supersize stuff anymore because it makes us look bad. Right. You know, even though they have combo meals and all this shit, but we're not going to like make it so you can get more and get fatter and all that stuff, even though all the food is fattening. But Burger King, it's like, oh, whatever. Yeah, we're a fast food restaurant. We have triple cheeseburgers. Oh, you don't want triple cheeseburgers? We have quadruple cheeseburgers. Yeah. You know, even Carl's Jr., who I think is just god awful nasty, but they don't give a fuck either. They're yeah. Like, Remember the Philly cheesesteak sandwich? Yes. They, the marketing I, was... I bought that, by the way. The marketing was... It was kind of delicious. I don't know. Woman, eat, that, eat that sandwich. I mean, eat that burger. Oh, the lady in the bikini? That. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All the, oh, that's such bad God marketing because you're like, damn. that girl would... That girl probably made herself throw up in the... That's what I was about to say that. She yeah. had to. No, she I had to. The best was... Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I didn't try it on its first round coming out, but I got it on the second round. The KFC Double Down. Oh, my God. Which was literally two pieces of fried chicken. Yeah. In the middle was uh, a piece of like Swiss cheese and two strips of bacon and a sauce, and that wow. was it. That was it. It was <laughs> it was fucking ridiculous. It was just like that's too much. But it was great because it was just like fuck you. It's fast food. You either want it or you don't, right? Yeah, that's true. You know what, what the taco bug just had the fried chicken taco, right? Yeah, which I haven't had. I missed it too. I think it's gone now. Oh I think no, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay, like, my well, my colon is okay for right. it, but I, I definitely wanted to have, like, a bite of it just to see what it was like. <laughs> yeah, I think, like, I, I went on a date once with this girl, and she was like, let's meet at this burger place. And I was like, okay, they have really good burgers. And I was like, all right, cool. And it was in downtown L.A., and I met her there, and she was like, so I'm getting this. It was a it was a glazed donut burger. Oh, I've heard, I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, like, and it was covered with, like, maple glaze and bacon, and, like, I I asked her if we could split it, and she was like, oh... Well, I was still going to get one, and I was like, oh, that's well, good. can Fetish. you eat the other half of mine then? <laughs> well, I just didn't want to have a heart attack on yeah. a date, you know? That's how I felt the first time I got a, um, this is going to become the Food Network channel now, the uh, uh, Monte Cristo sandwich. Do you remember Ooh, Monte yeah. Cristo? Yes, I used to make those all the time. Oh, really? Yeah. At yeah. Disneyland, they have, I, 
it's one of those things where it's like my brain doesn't let me remember how my stomach felt. Because <laughs> yeah. I'd go back and I'd get it again. And every time I get it, I'd be like, I can only eat half of it because they give you two, like, you know, sandwiches. Right. It's, it's basically what you kind of just said. It's like a donut sandwich. It's like a deep fried uh, donut on the outside with turkey, ham, Swiss cheese on the inside. Mm-hmm. And then some people have powdered sugar and jam to spread on top of it as well. Yes. Yeah. It's yep. insanity. You know, to add to this burger conversation, how is Fat Burger even in business? What do you mean? Fat Burger's delicious. Those things are, those things are ridiculous. Oh, the, no, the, no. The quadruple XL I, Yeah, I don't get burgers. that. I get the, the, the single, I mean, usually like a turkey burger. Oh. Those things are just like designed to kill people. It's like well, like yeah. I mean, that. well, the Heart Attack Cafe or whatever, that's the one that's designed to kill people because it literally has. People have had heart attacks. Yeah, they, have to, they have to sign yeah, some Yeah, of course, they have to sign a thing. Yeah, really? people have had heart attacks while eating there in Vegas. It's wow. crazy. Wow. Um, do you have another one, Kevin? Yes, uh, fellas, and anyone who's from the um, Zennials, okay, or Oregon Trail generation, you might remember Mask. You know these toys. Oh, I do. I have so many still Mask in my closet toys, back home. Right? The toys and also the TV show, the cartoon. Basically, they had these cars that transform into vehicles. They were cool. They were cool. Well, no, they were like they were like. Vehicles that transport like like weapons like yeah, popped yeah. out of them yeah yeah not, not robots but just simply yeah. just just convert into like yeah to weapons or something right. like that well in the comics in the eighties there was a lot of mask advertisements so they were kind of cool you know to show you how they would transform and mm-hmm. you know you see like the characters you know in action doing their thing that was My the big favorite. thing of like any big toy company well, obviously it was G- from Kenner from Kenner by the way Kenner yeah oh, good job Kenner. obviously except for GI Joe because GI Joe actually went on a, like Larry Hama or Hama whatever it was yeah, went on a tear with that but I mean he actually really wrote like a legit book with that yes, for a long did. time yeah like, developed the characters and all that stuff mm-hmm. beyond the cartoon but yeah every toy I remember having Mask number one Mask Crusaders number one uh, Inhumanoids uh, number one like oh, every nice. every like yeah you know movie tie-ins but I had a Buckaroo Banzai comic from the yeah, movie uh, the um you know speaking of uh, prospecting which we've done before on here. Uh, a good one would be the He-Man. That's from, right. I think it's from DC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, He-Man, uh, Masters of the Universe. The like the new, the new like updated. No, version? the old, the old school one where oh, they came out right. during okay. the figure time. Oh right, that's right, right, like right, the right. first appearance of He-Man in a comic. So right. it's, and with a movie possibly coming in the future, and a franchise being possibly built around it. If it's done right. Yeah, if it's done right. My only qualm with the mask toys, I was a huge mask fan. I totally loved that. Oh, My only qualm yeah, with it too. was. The vehicle was really cool, but I was always pissed that the figures were small. Yeah, that was I always like a big, like at least just like a, a normal like six inch action figure. Well, the figures were, like... were very small. Yeah, I I let that go because you could put any figure in those vehicles then That's that were true. small or around yeah. that size. So you could put your GI Joes in there too. And I was a stick, uh, not a stickler. Not I was... your He-Man's, but your GI Joes. No, right. <laughs> I was a sucker for any any action figure. Star Wars did it, and like the Return of the Jedi times and Mask. That was all about it. Where you could take the mask or helmet off and put oh, it back yeah. on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. I, just I lost think, so many of those. Oh, of course. But the simple pleasure of just being like, I could take his mask off. Yeah. And I could put it back on. Right. I wish Core Commander would have let you do that. My favorite one on mask was the black SUV. Oh, yeah. And you would push down, I think it was on the, uh, on the bumper, uh-huh. and the back part, the uh-huh. cab section, would pop up, and then you open the, the top where the, like, the little, um, the little spoiler was right and there was a, a seat where you could set and then a gun like a machine gun like a double barrel machine gun up on was top was that the one like it, it opened like that like no like, no no this one it was oh i'm thinking of the i had the monster it was a, like a monster truck he was yeah. a good guy yeah yeah and you it the opened in the truck. middle and it popped up in the same kind of thing right like, it became like a yeah. gunner thing yeah this one was the suv and then the front the um the um headlights would pop out and those uh-huh. were guns and then the front grill you could push the front, like the hood, up, and then look, two little missile cannons would pop up. Right. And then the the hood would cover and act as a shield for the windshield. Right. So you couldn't shoot through that. It was like bulletproof. And that was just like the coolest thing to me. I was like, because it was also, you could just drive it around like an SUV. So if you didn't want to play Mask that day, right. you just had a cool you, SUV you could cool drive around. Car. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god! I'm, now I'm like, I want to go play with mask toys. Yeah, wow. I have them back home. Really? Like, I have three or four. You guys can come you, over. We'll all fly back to Ohio. <laughs> all right, play mask. What are you doing here, Donald? So good to see. You. Yeah, whatever, Mom. We're here to play with our mask <laughs> toys. Uh, and then they just went inside and played with mask toys for three hours <laughs> and got back on a plane. The weirdest thing. Now I want to add something to you and I discussed this off uh, off mic, uh, Jared, before we started this. Captain Power. Captain Power. Yeah, he was the guy. There was definitely a comic book involved, but also the toy, the toy. was uh, 
it was one of those kind of like what they started to do with a uh, gyromite for Nintendo. It was like one of those TV interactive. Supposedly, like you, like they would shoot a laser in the TV show and it could like react with your toy and hit right. it or something like that. Don't know if it actually worked. See, that might be like one of the early immersive, you know. Oh, for sure. Technologies. Yeah, though. it's pretty cool. For sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. Which also reminded me of the laser tag ads they had. In oh comics. yeah, laser tag. Yep. Uh, and then we were talking about the photon. Photon was the uh, the, the bootleg the, the, the TV rival. Show. Yeah. And yeah, go watch uh, if you can look at a YouTube some photon shows. It's like Mystery humor. Science Theater three thousand meets Power Rangers. Like as far as the, the photon. Set. Um, that was was that where you could like um, buy? Yeah, I think yeah, it was the green helmet, red helmet. Yes, I bought that. Yeah, me too. Well, my parents bought it for me when yeah. I was a kid. I still have it. Yeah, you but either the, had it laser wasn't tag like or it was. Yeah, laser tag was bigger. Right. right. Photon was not popular at all. It was kind of like what GoBots was to yes, Transformers, yes. essentially. So that's why I got it because it was on sale because mm -hmm. it wasn't popular. Mm -hmm. But it was still it was, cool. It was still cool. I still have that. That helmet. gun, that freaking phaser gun, was freaking awesome. Still have those guns too. Oh yeah. In my closet, but I had some. For not having a lot of money, my parents were smart. Like they would go to, like department stores. If if there was a like a, a department store. An hour from our place uh -huh. that was going out of business, right? They would go there. They raided, and they would they would buy everything because my parents would save money, right? And because they knew Christmas was coming and stuff, so they would buy stuff throughout the year. But what they did do was they saved a, you know what cash they had, so when this kind of stuff popped up, they would go and buy it, and for like the next two years, and you store it all, you know. So I would get stuff that was a little older, right? You know, or out of date, but right. it was still really cool for me, and I didn't give a shit. I was just a little kid, you know. It's totally. like whatever. You're I had fun you. playing with them. You know, like, it's it's harder when you have a friend that's close to you that has more money and can get all the updated cool shit. Mm -hmm. Right. And that makes you a little jealous and upset. But at the end of the day, I mean, as long as you go home and you have some toys to play with. That's all that matters. You're still happy. <laughs> oh, that's all that matters. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, we, and also, I mean, I, like, when I went and played with, like, my, my toys, I would have... Three He-Man toys, five G.I. I mean, like yeah, me too. I would also create my. I mean, if I wasn't you create playing, your own story, yeah, basically. I would just create my. I have my story. Transformers versus my Voltron toys or something like that, you know. Right. I had a. Uh, uh, well, what I would do is because before they had started making Marvel and DC figures. I mean, you know, they had the superpowers and the Secret Wars figures, but you know, they didn't have like a full. They didn't have like the characters I wanted at the time, you mm -hmm. know. So I would have like. Uh, one figure that was kind of dark, and I'd be like, that's Sunspot. You know, like, I, I would make them other comic book characters and create teams. or do Like, if there was a story I was reading in the comic, I would, like, find... I would cast those figures as different characters and stuff like mm -hmm. that. This, 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 this one's a stretch, because, yes, there's Jurassic Park comics, but there's also how, how they would do, like, tie-ins with movies, comics, and we were talking about food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember when Jurassic... Park came out. I think it was the first. Yeah, it was the first one. Yeah, ninety three. They had Burger King or McDonald's had the Jurassic meal. Oh yes, I remember oh, that. Yeah. And it was like a triple cheeseburger or something like that, and like a large fry. It was like a big meal, a dinosaur. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is like an infamous story at a summer camp I went to. Oh boy, <laughs> this is when like Jarrett Jarrett was you know a little quiet dude, you know precocious at times. Sometimes you know would do some acting stuff and kind of act out and be funny and all that stuff, but. When you saw Jarrett lose it, it was a sight to behold. Because so, it, it took a lot. So what are you doing at 14 years old? Well, no, no, no. So I'm at, I think I was about 13 going on 14 at this okay. time. We're at summer camp, and uh, it was my, I was like, there was like the cabins. And I was the, in the oldest boy's cabin. Mm -hmm. And my brother, uh, who had been going to the camp too, was now a staff member. And I think he was a counselor. Uh, oh. And he had, but he had a day off. And like the counselors would get days off and they'd go. And one of the things that was so cool about days off is we'd be like, because we we're up in the goddamn mountains eating the cafeteria food. And, you know, we're not seeing, we haven't seen civilization for weeks. Right. And so like a cupcake, a Twinkie, anything from the outside world that they could <laughs> yeah. bring in. It's a big deal. So we would, they would make, make a list. Like sometimes these poor counselors would be spending like their whole day off at like Costco buying people's like. Stuff. Wish list, yeah. Right. So we'd be like, dude, get me like a six pack of Diet Coke I could hide under my bed, or <laughs> get me a uh, squeeze it, or get me a goddamn like a bunch of cupcakes. And I had missed McDonald's, and I was, I'm a huge, I'm a cheeseburger fucking connoisseur. Really? And I was to my brother, I went, hey man, do me a favor. You're my brother. I'll pay you. Get me a Jurassic meal. <laughs> and he's like, all right, I can do that. So he comes back all day. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get my goddamn Jurassic meal. I'm so, my poor brother had like his cabin and then our cabin, like all the cabins were like, can you get us this, get us this, get So he literally spent his whole day at Costco 
just buying everybody's that shit. Sucks. And then just drove back. Yeah. That sucks. And he comes back in, he's all tired, and I walk up and I'm like, hey, not even like, hey man, how you doing, man? Wait, how, how was it? Hey, where's my Jurassic meal? And he's like, what? And I'm like, where is my Jurassic meal? <laughs> and he's like, oh, I, I forgot to get it. I didn't stop at McDonald's. And plus, like, not, not even thinking, also like, you, it would have been in this fucking bag for like two hours while I'm driving up a goddamn mountain right. with flat ass coke and gro- gross ass burger. And I was like, fuck you! I want my fucking Jurassic! <laughs> Completely just like, thank God they didn't have fucking video cameras. Because like, I would be all over everybody's Facebook feed. Like, kid loses it over Jurassic Meal. They'd be like, you spoiled piece of shit. Yeah. yeah. And I just, and to this you definitely day. definitely be that YouTube bastard. Oh my God. And to this day, like, my one of my friends who was like uh, he was like my friend in, in the cabin with me. He's like, hey oh Jared. He's like, you want your Jurassic meal, man? You're getting kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, you need a Jurassic meal? Like, Shut the fuck up. <laughs> they didn't do anything amazing. last year with Jurassic. Oh, sorry, two years ago with Jurassic. They should read redid that. I think they always do something. I don't know some food. They did have a some. promotion I know for for that past last Jurassic World I believe. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was a friend of mine and his girlfriend at the time, which is now his wife, by the way. Uh, in, um, what was it? It was in Thailand, I believe. Um, they had these eggs, these like silver eggs promotions for the movie. Oh, like and dinosaur said, eggs? Yeah, and it said Jurassic World on it. You opened it up, and I'm not sure if there was candy or something else inside, but it was really cool. Right. And my friend saw it online, and he was commenting how cool it was, and she was like, oh, well, we have them here. I'll just bring you one or send you one. And I, right. I can't remember if she brought it over or sent it. But after that, it was love at first sight and ended up getting married like six months later. Oh, wow. It's crazy. Who remembers? Hmm. I vividly remember having this. I think it was when Return of the Jedi came out. Burger King or McDonald's had the glass cups with the characters on them. They're like collector's cups now. They had like like Ewoks on them or Boba Oh, Fett you know what? I remember. Like yeah, the, the tall, the yeah, tall, tall cup glasses. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, legit yeah, yeah. glasses. Yep. Like, yeah. They did that again with the, the Batman, uh, the third Batman. Right, movie Batman from Forever. the '90s. Yes, thank you. They did that for Batman Forever. They had the the two face where he's flipping a coin, and the coin flipping is the handle. Right, you know stuff like that. The Joker one Someone where just, it's his question mark staff. They Remember. tried to do it with like I don't know if it was McDonald's or Burger King or something for Riddler. with with the last X Men movie. Say? He's a Joker. Oh, he's a Joker. Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> the question mark Joker guy. No, but uh, they some of them like it makes me kind of it weakens the movie in a sense. Like they did it for the X Men Apocalypse. They had like. Like, yeah, that was weird. Bur- it, it didn't fit because it was like a serious. It wasn't like a campy movie. It was like right. it was a more, serious more apocalypse serious. movie. Right. And then they had like Storm, like like Deadpool. Go ahead, do it all Deadpool, you want. Yeah, right. Completely. Or even like the the campy uh, Tim Burton Batman films. Right. You know, like that all made sense. But, I mean Schumacher. Well, Schumacher. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's right. Tim Burton did the good ones. Schumacher did the campy, ridiculous, terrible, <laughs> no good, <laughs> bad ones. Very bad. Yes, he was terrible. Well, he wasn't. Well, he was. Let's be honest. It was awful. He let that shit fly. Schumacher's such a weird director, too, because he's so hit or miss. Because I love The Lost Boys. That was all yeah. Schumacher. Falling Down, Schumacher. True. I got a fun one for you guys real quick. Um, in 2009, Warner Brothers uh, officially sanctioned a <laughs> a Dr. Manhattan colored Watchmen condom. Oh, yeah. That's the, the be-all, end-all. Yes. Blue yeah. condoms in a matchbook... Um, tight paper sleeve. The outside had the the picture of the button on it. Mm. You know, the smiley face with a little bit of blood. And when you opened it, it had a saying on the inside that stated, "We're society's only protection." Yes, this was a thing. For Where the were Watchmen they marketing movie. this shit? Like, I were they marketing? Like, too? I think it was a free handout. Yeah, yeah. but they were. It was because it was a rated R movie. It was on a cow's so or something. It was for an adult. You know, they were like, "Well, let's just say." You know, I don't know who thought of it. The was, high schools are like, hey, kids, you going to go on a date to see Watchmen? Well, if you get laid, there you go, kids. Society's only protection. Society's only protection. Yeah. These things go for 30 to $75 on eBay, a by box? the way. A uh, box? Used. Used. Not, not used. <laughs> They're tied in a knot. Like per, per piece, essentially. Per little pack, yeah. It's wow. just one in a little matchbox like packet. So what's so special? Does it glow in the dark or something? It's just blue. Does it glow in the dark? So if you say, hey, why don't you blue me? It doesn't quite make sense, but it's still funny. Wow. Oh, yum. Yum, yum. I got oh blued. Oh, shit, I know. <laughs> I mean, I guess, you know, we're going to have to rename this, like, movie. We're just going to have to rename this tie-ins to things, but, like, fucking Ecto Cooler. Oh, yeah, Ecto Cooler. Mm, that, that was, like, a huge thing. I and then still they have a can in my fridge. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll bust it open. We can have some right now. Goddamn Ecto Cooler. Yeah. 
What was it? Was it like a lime flavor or something? Yeah, like you that? guys keep talking. I'm going to go grab the Ecto Cooler. All right, we're going to drink Ecto Cooler. Well, while, we're, while, 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 while he's going to get that um, special drink. I'm getting it. Another one is, remember Atari's ads from those 80s? Like, yeah, Pac-Man, Space Invaders, Super Cobra. Or Spider-Man. Remember Spider-Man. The, the Spider-Man where you, when he shot his web, it was like rectangle, 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 rectangle. 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 Yep. I never played, because, I mean, Atari was when we were real. Real young. young. We are like toddlers, basically. I remember... Or infants, whatever the case may be. I remember there was a Tower Records in San Francisco that had uh, the Spider-Man game, like, like the real game, you could play it in there or something like that. And I remember always being like, I wish I knew how to play video games. Oh, I can't play this thing. I want to. Oh, it's just, just like, the red button was weird. The red button guys, and the stick. Do you guys remember when the Spider-Man movie uh, video game for the one uh, that Sam Raimi directed, uh, the first one there, do you remember when that video game landed? It landed on GameCube, and I don't know if it landed on uh, PS, PlayStation or PlayStation not. PlayStation 2, I believe. But right. or one, one Bruce of Campbell did the voice for the tutorial to teach you how to play the I game. I do remember that. Yes. So awesome. Yeah, I'd be like, all right. Yeah, and he'd be like, all right. So you want to spin your web over here. Okay, so I have it right here. Ghostbusters, only in theaters, it says. High C Ecto Cooler in a can, 11.5 ounces, 150 calories per can citrus drink. Uh, this did expire. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. In October of last year, but you know why? I hung on to it because I was waiting for a moment like this, guys. You're kidding? No. You waited almost a year to crack it open. Yep. Here we go. We're gonna have some ecto cooler live. Live ecto cooler. It's green, just like Mama used to make. I'm gonna also flat out say I've written an article on ecto cooler, and I don't even—I've never had it. So. I wrote a report on bringing back ecto cooler in yeah. college. Oh, people really? were like, dying. I knew a guy who every night was like posting pictures of like him drinking Ecto Cooler. Gentlemen, All right, cheers. 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 To Slimer. To Slimer. Mm. It's not bad. Not bad. It's refreshing. It's a hot day here today. Isn't it? Yeah, it is pretty hot today. Brings it all back, doesn't it? It does. Mm. 1984, 1989, and I guess yeah. even last year. For some the reason, too. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> so the real short box bringing you... The real Ghostbusters Ecto Cooler. And we'll be doing Ecto Cooler uh, tastings at the local Trader Joe's if you guys want to come <laughs> by. We'll be in the back by the wines. <laughs> we'll just be yeah. in the back this alley. This Ecto Cooler is uh, it's hey, crisp, it's nice, it's got, it's not too heavy, it's light. Right. Well, it's a little tame. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you got to swish it around in your mouth a little. It's got hints of uh, yellow number one and green number two. Mm. Stuff that I would not honestly feed to your kids, but it's got some juice. It's 10% juice. 10% juice. Oh. Oh. juice. Vitamin C, 100%, guys. Ooh. See, I want to know who makes the recipes for these things. Okay, it's got so, 41 grams of sugar, but... You know. Yes, indeed. So when the, <laughs> when the Wolverine movie came out, there was uh, Red Robin did a Berserker burger. And oh, I, I did? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, here's an ingredients, too. A single beef patty, which I think is kind of pussy, uh, if you're doing a Wolverine burger. And it's Berserker. That's just one patty. Uh, topped with spicy aioli and spiced pickles, cheddar cheese, and a bed of sriracha onion straws. I don't, I'm not going to lie, I, I don't think, I, I don't see Wolverine enjoying this. I don't either. I think he'd want like a like a rare triple cheeseburger. Yeah. I've got one speaking of uh, food again, mm -hmm. um, and this one's a big one, guys. This one uh, is the X-Men Pizza Hut tie-in. Mm. In 1993, Pizza Hut offered two X-Men VHS tapes with two different episodes from the animated series on each tape. I believe it was two. Um, for four ninety nine plus pizza purchase, so you had to buy any size pizza. I always got the personal pan pizza, and then you just got VHS tape. And then I would buy the VHS tape for four ninety nine. Oh, that's cool. You got a VHS tape, mini poster, and comic, along with a collectible trading card. Ooh! All for four ninety nine, guys. Two episodes from the show. At the height of the series' popularity, Pizza Hut sold these, and they also uh, contained on these uh, tapes. A roundtable discussion between between prominent names such as X-Men creator Stan Lee and 90s writer Scott Lobdell <laughs> and that son of a bitch Fabian. Was he there? Yes. Fabian? He was there. So what were the episodes? Ruining that... every moment. So what were the episodes that they gave you? This is like the 90s, okay. right? Okay, the... easy enough. Tape 1, yeah, from the 90s. Tape 1 had Night of the Sentinels Part 1 and 2. Right. Tape 2 ones. had Enter Magneto and Deadly Reunions. So they did the first four episodes, I think. Yep. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um, Anybody have one last one before we go? Sure. Trying to see here. I don't know if anything is going to beat Watchmen condoms. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Uh, well, there was, it looks like it was in um, 
in Asia, there was a red chili noodle for Iron Man 3 instant, instant soup. <laughs> I would have actually enjoyed that, I think. The soup from Sanyo Foods had an onion and garlic flavor. Mm. And it was colored bright red. Oh, that's... Delightful. Mm. It's just all the coloring. Everything just like, whatever the hero was, they're like, just food color the shit out yeah, of it. Yeah, have you ever eaten those, uh, they have these every year, they're, uh, they're black and orange Halloween tortilla chips. I right. can't remember what company does it, but you poop neon green. Really? It's the most amazing sure thing. Sure, is that uh, Tostitos? I don't know. Oh. I mean, it could be. Mm. But, yeah, speaking of neon green, I'm just going to finish up my high C here as we finish up this podcast. So. Yeah. Rate, review, uh, but before you rate and review it, subscribe to it on iTunes, because why would you rate and review something you don't even know what the hell you're <sighs> getting into? iTunes, YouTube. This is delicious. Facebook. Check it out on Facebook. Sundays. Yeah. Don't we have something special going on Sundays? Yes. When when Jared doesn't forget, we do Sunday Smackdowns where... Uh, we have our SmackDown episodes where we know we pick battles, but uh, Sunday SmackDowns, I kind of leave it up to you, mm. the audience, and I want to hear your feedback on what you think about these battles, these fights, who would win, who you got, right? Um, and why. And speaking of audiences, where will we see them? Uh, we'll see you, and them, and us, and we, 